So I'm back. I achieved the the goal last year, which was agreed with the customers customer that we'd get it up and get the roof sealed and waterproofed before the winter came in. And we just got it, just got it there. It was tight. Um, I had hoped to get all the pine tar put on everything as well before the winter kicked in, but didn't quite get there. So I'm gonna get that sorted out. But what we need to do is get these benches done. So this part of the video was filmed on the 30th of May, 2022. And as you can see, it's just a beautiful day. But we had a long, cold, dark winter here. In fact, the last video I posted, which was posted in December, when the temperature hit minus 22, and I just got the call on the 13th of May, about two weeks ago, finally to say that the, the steep hill, which is the only access route to the work site here, was finally free of ice. Now for these benches I wanted something a little bit special, not the kind of stuff that you can just buy straight off the shelf. So back in March I went over to prepare the materials. Oh, spring is springing and I came over here to Erdu's place to cut some planks. These are the benches to the building. I'm hoping to get back up there very shortly so I need to have the material. I already cut one log which is a bit smaller than this one for the side benches. I need one really wide one and this is a larch which is 80 centimeters in diameter. Um, if anyone's interested, this is the Still 880 saw with a one meter bar and of course the Alaskan mill. So I'm going to take the top off of this, turn that top piece over and then cut myself a, a plank uh, two and a half inches thick to match the, the other ones I did last week. And then I'm going to readjust this to three inches because Air 2 wants some three inches planks off of this. So let's get going. So something I want to say is that, uh, at least in this part of the world, this kind of material is quite rare. You don't get really big, nice trunks very often. And the reason, of course, is that wood is worth money. People turn it into cash as soon as they can. As soon as the tree gets big enough to be pulped for paper or chipped for energy, then they get felled and processed. It's a great shame. And I don't mean it's a shame that I don't have really nice big planks to play with. I mean it's a great shame that they're cutting the trees down without letting them grow to their full potential. I've had more than once people ask me, they've got a nice big old tree in the back garden, they're asking me if they cut it down then what am I going to pay for materials, for the material, the wood. If it's a nice old healthy tree I'd much rather it was left standing. 
a nice old healthy tree is far more beautiful standing than anything I can make out of it out of the wood that comes from felling it so just leave it there Now these larch logs were already felled, they were piled up and Air2 spotted them and made an offer on them which is why we're able to now use them and this kind of material I'm more than happy to make use of rather than let it go to get sliced up into small pieces or pulped. Quite often these big trunks they won't even fit through the machinery that the, the, the forestry industry has for processing wood so they will just get pulped for paper or chipped for energy which is such a shame so when a chance like this comes along to get this kind of stuff that's already been cut down and can now be put to some good use then that's all good Now I mentioned that I'm using the Alaskan sawmill here. Um, if you're interested then there's lots and lots of material online. You can do a search and there's lots of videos out there of, of how, how to use them, people using them. And I will put a link in the description of where you can get a hold of them. So glad the winter's over. Much better weather now, nice and warm. To be honest, it's not even the cold that's the problem, it's the dark. This part of the world, midwinter, we get out to four hours of sunlight a day. Of course, the other side of the coin is that now we're getting to the point in summer where we've got 20 hours of sunlight a day, four hours of dark. Anyway, the supports for these benches, nothing fancy, I'm keeping it as simple as possible. So in order, that, in order to do these benches, as it happens during the winter I was asked to collaborate on a little project that kind of was similar in the end phases to this. Similar planks going into a similar shaped building. In fact I'll put a link, where is it, over there? To that project. Um, we started off measuring the angles so that we could pre-cut the planks to the right shapes before putting them in, but then I realized that that wasn't going to work. Now if you're using um, straight milled planks that are all the same width and the same, same shapes and everything then you could do it that way, just to do it with maths and ge geometry, but because I'm using planks of different widths, different edge shapes, and all that kind of stuff, what I figured out, firstly, of course, all these planks were cut a little bit longer than needed, and then I measured the length of the wall, cut the plank to that length, put it in, and the off cuts that come off of that, I'm then using as a spacer, at the other end of the next bench so that I can now repeat the process get the next plank cut it to the length of that wall and place it on top here so it's gonna come right onto this plank and that means that I, I can then find out the point where the edges uh, meet draw that point have the point that I want to cut to marked on the back wall, that's my mark there, and I can draw that line 
I can cut that and then put it back in and then use that as a template to draw the line on the bottom plank and then take everything out, cut it, put more back in. Then you get a nice, nice line, a nice angle where the edges meet, which they wouldn't otherwise because if you were just assuming this is a, a, a 45 degree wall, so we'll do a 45 degree cut, you're doing with planks of different widths, so they wouldn't meet up at the edges, but this way they do. Now there is a saying, is it measure twice, cut once. So measure, check your measurement before cutting, because once you've cut, you can't recut. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. I prefer to kind of measure twice and then cut twice. I'll measure, I'll check the measure, and then I'll cut it always too long. When you're dealing with interesting buildings where the walls aren't necessarily straight, the angles aren't necessarily perfect, then I always cut everything twice. I've put it, cut it a little bit too long, put it in, and then can modify a bit and get it in place. And that way, it usually works. Anyway, I'll get on with that. Okay, not so sure I explained that terribly well, but here's how it works. Because of the two cut rule, cut this plank a little bit too long in place and got it lined up and then the right end of this plank didn't quite match the angle of the wall to the right there so those couple of extra centimeters that I left means that I'm then able to easily just draw the new angle and adjust the end of the plank. Then it's easy enough to just find that point where the two front edges of the two planks cross vertically and make a mark on the top plank. Then draw the top line for the cutting that plank. Then of course, once it's cut and repositioned, then it serves as the perfect template to draw the cut line on the bottom plank. Rinse and repeat. Naturally, I then repeated the whole process with the two small front benches right at the, the front of the building. And then it's just a few details and tying up some loose ends. And then we're going to be done.
so, as they say around here, te deva suoritettu, which means job done. Project's finished. It's been really, really fun. I've enjoyed this one. Customers happy. Um, I've been pleased to see that from some of the comments, some people have found these videos helpful, which is great. Nice to know. I should mention that the next project that I'm going to be filming um, it'd be great if you could come along and have a look at what I'm doing. It's a bit different. It's not log building. So for those people that are watching this because they want to learn about log, car, log, log building, then this, there's not going to be much log building in this next one. It's something that I've been dreaming of doing for a long time, which is building a, a bunker, an underground bunker. And through a strange set of coincidences, I've got an opportunity to do it. So if you're interested in that, then hopefully you'll stay subscribed and you'll get updated, notified when those videos start coming out. But for this video series, it's kind of difficult at this point because how do you end the series without it being an anticlimax? I came up with something. Hope you like it. So the project is underway and I just want to take a few moments to this is the, actually the well, first layer of logs on the in-between walls and as you see these big logs. The log as it cracks there it will open up like this. And now that's you the notice, amount that I need to drop that beam. I was talking about getting these supports down onto this bowed log. Now the diagonal back edges of the roof were done differently. I over, I overshot, if you like, with the felt by five so centimeters. the mix. Five centimeters. I found. I don't know if you can see that the lake this pine tar. is actually frozen out to 